Welcome back to the KFAN Golden Gopher Big Ten Basketball video blog here at the KFAN Clear Channel Studios in St. Louis Park. I am Lindsay Gensel, also known to most of you as Intern Gal, here with Tiny Joe Nelson. Hola. From the the uh, Spanish Tiny Joe Nelson from the Paul Allen Project. <laughs> I thought it would be appropriate to start off this broadcast by sending some well wishes to Minnesota's own Al Nolan, who is undergoing surgery today to insert a pin into his foot after he broke it during Minnesota's big on the road win at Michigan on Saturday. Um, a tough loss for the Gophers, who seem to finally be getting things together after the DeVoe Joseph, Trevor and Bachway issues from the season. What does this mean for this team, losing Al at the point? Uh, it means everything. I mean, you lose uh, your big time defender on the defensive side of the ball and on offense a guy that had been stepping up of late so you gotta figure out a way to replace him offensively and it's this is something that Tubby's had to deal with all season long at the start of the season if you asked me and pretty much anybody else in the world who followed gopher basketball who who the offensive roles would go through who's your number one option two option and three option the number one consensus option was Blake Hoffarber number two was DeVoe Joseph and number three was Ralph Sampson DeVoe Joseph leaves, and all of a sudden, your number one option remains, Blake Hoffarber. Trevor Mbakwe jumps into that number two spot because he had been playing so well. And then Al Nolan, he took that place because DeVoe was gone. More balanced scoring attack from your guards. We needed Al to step up, and he did. Ralph Sampson, it's your time now, ladies and gentlemen. Blake Hoffarber is going to be running the point the majority of the season if or until uh, Al Nolan gets back. So what's that mean? That means Blake Hoffarber at the point. You can't run the offense through yourself unless you're Derrick Rose or John Wall or one of the elite <laughs> point guards in the world today. So good luck doing that. He's still going to get his numbers, but it's. I would be surprised if it's 13, 14 points a game and four threes, you know, knocking down two to four threes every night. It's going to be tough to do. So who has to step up? Ralph Sampson. That, now what Tubby's dealing with is, in my opinion, number one go-to guy on the offensive side of the ball, Trevor Mbakwe. Get it inside, let him get to the free throw line, hopefully he hits those. We'll talk, we'll talk about more of that in a second. Your number two option, Hoff Arbor. Number three, Ralph Sampson. But with only eight players on scholarship right now on this active roster, it's thin. It's it's, it's meaty. This is not the situation the Gophers wanted to be yeah, in. Yeah, it's a short bench they've got going. And Tubby's going to have to deal with that. So hopefully the offense will pick it up starting tonight with Northwestern. Uh, and you know what? One big factor will be definitely getting to the free throw line some more. Yeah, and with this Gopher squad, you know, they started out the season pretty strong from the free throw line. They had six strong games there. Against Michigan, they were 13 for 23, which is an awful stat. You know, they went into the Michigan game. No one, you know, you thought, you said, direct quote, I think, from last week was, Michigan is garbage. But well, they are. the garbage wo why Wolverines, excuse me, you know, they proved to be kind of a, a challenge for the Gophers. I mean, we only won by five points, but in the Big Ten, it seems to be a victory is a victory. It pushed the Gophers sure. over the 500 mark. Yep. They're sitting at four and three going into this Northwestern home match, and then they've got Purdue on the road on Saturday. But... If you look at the Minnesota-Michigan game from Saturday, the Gophers put up 38 rebounds to 13, and we only won by five points. The, that goes right back to the free throw line. You know, yeah, you're, right. you're 13 from 23 the week before they were, um, what was it? 27 out of 37 against Iowa. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's just, you know, that's not that bad of a stat, but it's still 10 points that you could have put on there, and it would have, you know, taken some of the the pressure out there in the second half, and I think that's going to be something that's really important with this team, especially since you are losing Al Nolan. Tonight is going to be a time for those boys to step up, to take on the leadership role. And, I mean, we do have some good options there. We've got the three freshmen. The problem with the three, three freshmen, and you and I have talked about this at, at length, they're young, they're rookies, they're, they're fresh on the court, they make mistakes. That's something that you don't see from Blake Hoffarber. So if we can get those guys to step over that and kind of take some of the pressure off of Blake, like you said, you can't run the offense to yourself, and... Blake has shown he put up huge numbers against Purdue, smaller numbers against Iowa, but he's someone that we can be, we can consistently depend on on this Gopher squad. No, I'm with you on that, and there there are going to be growing pains, and everybody's aware of that too. But Maverick Ahan Misi, he's got to knock down a couple of threes every night now. I mean, it's not a question of when he comes into the game, can he just you know keep the bleeding at a at a minimum? <laughs> it's a matter of can he force the other team to bleed a little bit? He needs to do that. Austin Hollins. You know, he's been nice defensively, you know, for the most part, in my opinion, for the Gophers. Very aggressive, tipping some balls for some second chance points down low, but, you know, he's got to score too. And Chip Armland, you can't make those 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 freshman mistakes. These guys 
although there will be growing pains, there will be frustration, there will be people screaming from the barn and the second deck saying, Second deck, What yes. the hell, Tubby? <laughs> get these guys out of there. Well, Tubby, guess what? He doesn't have anybody else to get out of there, so, uh, or to put in there. So the growing pains will be there. That's, that's fine. But you need some sort of offensive production from these guys. Defensively, Expect them to drop back into a 2-3 zone or a 3-2 zone and see what happens. Uh, other than that, I mean, this is the same Gopher team. You just lose Al Nolan, who at the beginning of the year shouldn't have been a big offensive contributor anyway. So, Ralph Sampson, it's time to step up. Yeah, and I think, you know, I don't think anyone in Minnesota expects the Gophers to be Big Ten contenders right now. I think Ohio State has pretty much taken the cake on who is going to take the Big Ten title. But looking at this Northwestern game, this and the Purdue game on the road, yeah. Both games are really important for the Scovers because we've got Illinois and Ohio State right around the corner. So as Tiny Joe here said, next week when we come back to you Wednesday at 1 p.m., it will be a panic or positivity. You know, one, you might be in a panic, I might be in a positive mood, might be the other way around. But depending on what happens this week, you will, you will be, tune in next week and find out, I guess is all I'm trying to say here. You know, we'll see where the Scover squad is going and if... And if we should be covering our eyes when we take on the fighting in a lion eye and those those dang buckeyes, but so yeah. Um, any other final thoughts from you? I'm with you on this. I mean, you, you you should win two of the next three at home tonight against Northwestern. You should lose on the road to Purdue. It's it's, it's going to happen, ladies and gentlemen. They're not going to win at Purdue. If uh, if Antoine Moore had any bit of a decent game at the barn. Well, thank you, Al Nolan, for making that happen. I think we that, that victory, yeah, yes. Purdue wins at, in, in Minnesota, too. But you should beat Indiana on the road. But then Ohio State, Illinois, so a couple of wins, one loss. You should be 6-4 and four after 10, eight games to go in the conference, and uh, we'll see what happens. Can they win three or four of those to get into the tournament? Well, and I just I feel like you know we gave our shout-out to Al Nolan, but we should give out a shout-out to our um, co-worker, Justin Gard, who's Iowa Hawkeyes got their Big Ten win against Indiana last week. So I think that is a great way to finish off the show there. I am Lindsay Gensel, intern gal. Tiny Joe Nelson here. Tune in next week, and we will see you then.